So the next step in my process is adding some artwork. Uh, it's not uh, really a necessary step, but it's something I like to do just to, uh, you know, you name your circuit board, you put something cool on it. So um, I have a little bit of space right here where I could put a name and um, maybe a graphic somewhere. Um, so the way I do this is I create a, um, a BMP image file uh, in Photoshop. And here's what I've come up with for this, the jetpack. Um, and I, what I do is I take uh, some measurements of where I'm planning on putting it, just some width right here, and that's going to be about three millimeters. So not a ton to work with, and, you know, that, but that gives you an, a, a ballpark idea of how big your canvas area for where you can put artwork is. Um, so I drew this up to about those dimensions, and I did it at um, 600 DPI. Uh, and the reason I do at 600 DPI is um, that gives me a lot of wiggle room if I need to change the scaling. Uh, and the way you import a BMP into Eagle uh, is first I'm going to group uh, everything on my circuit board and just move it away from the origin point. Uh, and the reason for that is that if you are, uh, when you import your image, it's going to start at the origin point and that will go right over certain parts of your circuit board which will make it um, more difficult to um, move your graphic later without also selecting like this capacitor or you know the outboard outline or the one of the planes or anything like that so once you got that moved out of the way you come up here to the command line and type in run space import dash bmp and that will bring this up you hit OK. And this is the, uh, the graphic that I'm going to import. Just double click it. And it'll ask if you want to scan for colors. And I'm just using black and white. And I'm just going to use that on the silk screen. It'll just pick one. And I'm going to say, no, I don't need you to scan it. I'm just going to be using one particular color. And that is the black. So I'm going to click OK. And then this comes up and we're going to be importing it uh, uh, a format as DPI dots per square inch. Uh, and that value that we made in Photoshop was 600. And like I said, the reason I use 600 is because if I pull it in and 600 is just, it's a little too small or something, I can bump it down to like 400 and enlarge it without losing uh, too much resolution at all. Uh, it'll ask what layer you want to put that on and default the, the default BMP layer is 200 and that is fine to start with. Um, so we're going to click OK and then it's generated the script and then you say yes run script and it will start importing it there. So basically the way that works is it takes takes your BMP and scans it and makes each bit of it a line based on the DPI and how big that line is. And you'll notice up here, our grid has changed to 0.001667, which is apparently what the grid is for 600 DPI or whatever. Uh, go ahead and change that back to what you've been using. In this case, I'm gonna get pretty small. Um, and you'll see down here, this is gonna tell you where it came from. Um, we don't need that, delete that. And then uh, you will grab your graphic like a group, group it, um, select the move tool, right click, move, and then come up here, again zoom wheel to um, zoom in and out, and we can put it right there, something like that. So yeah, it looks pretty cool. Now it's on, this whole group is on layer 200. Um, and we need it to be on the uh, top silk screen, which would be layer 25 or 21. Um, I generally go with 25 because that's the names, it's the name, whatever. Um, now you can, when you run your um, BMP import, you can import it straight to, to um, You can run it. You can import it straight into layer 25 or whatever whatever other layer you want to. I um, would suggest at least initially, until you get a hang of this technique, to import it at, at 200 or on level on layer 200 
just in case you forget to move it or you place it somewhere and something gets ungrouped and oh no how am I going to group this you can easily go into your visible layers and turn off um, everything visible but layer 200 or enough so that you can select it again without um, selecting other stuff you don't want to move. Um, I don't need to do that right now, but what we will do now is we'll come over here to change. We'll click on that. We want to change layer. And we are going to move this to layer 25. Okay, and then right click, change group, and it's changed color. It's now on layer 25. We can double check that by grabbing the info tool and just clicking on, see there's a line of it. Click on that and it will show you layer 25 names. Cool. So we've got that. Um, I am going to probably tweak this a little bit more. I will say, let's go now that we've got it placed where we want it to, um, grab it and move it all back to the origin point. We're close enough. There we go. Cool. And you can also go through now and add any other little bits of text you might want to add. In this case, I want to call out the pins for the MOSFET here. Um, and so I believe that's going to be source gate drain like this. Oh, it's really small. Let's get it to something visible. Um, and then I like to put it just over the package and then move the package name or the part name over here. So that shows that this is the source, this is the gate, and this is the drain. Um, I like to do that for transistors. You don't really need to do it for ICs because it's got a square pin representing pin one. Um, other than that, I think that's all the extra labeling I want to do. Um, yeah, so that's how you can add some nice graphics and, you know, any extra labeling you need to do. And that's it.